As a new poultry farmer, preparing for the arrival of your day-old chicks can be stressful, especially if you're expecting a large number of pets. So in today's video, do grab a pen and paper because I'll be giving you a checklist of what you need and what you need to do before the arrival of your day-old chicks. <music> Before we get into the video i am nana from nt farms and on this channel we talk about how we manage our layer poultry farm and farming topics in general so if you are interested in this content do remember to subscribe and also remember to comment and share our videos so we can go together number one on the list is building a brooder and i have already posted a video on how we built our brooder for 1600 day old chicks and left the link of the video in the description so you can also check out that video so let's imagine that you have built your brooder and you've made sure that it is predator proof has enough ventilation and has all the qualities of a good brooder the next thing that you have to do is to make sure that it is clean enough for your beds you have to clean the floors and disinfect the whole area before spreading out the bedding material of your choice and then you have to disinfect the bedding material as well and that is the same process that we went through i mentioned in my previous video that we used a polythene sheet for our brooder so we had to clean the polythene sheet scrub the floors disinfect the whole area before spreading out our wood shavings on the floor after that we went ahead to disinfect the wood shavings too and for the wood shavings it's preferable to spread it out about a week or so before they arrive so it can dry out and this is important because keeping the chicks dry creates a conducive environment for them number two is for you to purchase the equipment that you need to take care of your day old chicks so before they arrive you need to buy their feeders and their drinkers and you also have to make sure that you have cleaned and disinfected them before they are used you also have to buy a heating system to keep them warm we chose to use clay pots in the beginning but we later got a gas stove so it depends on what you want some people don't want the stress of starting a fire using charcoal and going for gas Others also feel gas is a safer option as the birds can fly and fall into the pots if they are not covered. So it depends on what you want. But the most important thing in all of this is to keep them warm. The next thing you can decide to get is a thermometer. At the initial stage of taking care of your day old chicks, temperature regulation is very important. At every stage, there is a particular temperature which is conducive for the day-old chicks. So you can decide to get a thermometer to help you regulate temperature. I must say we didn't get a thermometer. We decided to use the more natural method of telling if the temperature was okay by reading the behavior of the beds. If they were all huddled together in one corner towards a heat source, it meant they were feeling cold. If they were away from the heat source, it meant they were warm. But if they were evenly dispersed in the brooder, it meant they were just fine. So that is the method we used to tell if the temperature was okay for them. Number three is for you to get all their food, medicine, and for you to ensure that there is a constant supply of water on the farm. Now, I don't know about medicine, but what I know is that there are two things that a chicken cannot live without, and that is food and water. Mm. So there should always be a constant supply of these two. It is always advisable to have a storage of food so you don't run into trouble 
when there is a shortage on the markets. In the medicine category, the most common ones used throughout the life cycle of the beds mm -hmm. are the vitamins, antibiotics, and cosidiostats. Oh, no. So those should always be readily available to be used. And also, okay. when they arrive on the farm, you have to give them glucose to boost their energy since they will be tired because they traveled a long distance from the hatchery to the farm. The fourth point is for you to get a veterinary officer assigned to your farm. What I'm saying is that you need to get someone that you can easily call concerning health issues or when you have emergencies. We have a veterinary officer we call when we notice changes in our beds and he has been helpful enough to provide solutions via phone. And even though that situation is not ideal because a veterinary officer is supposed to visit the farm regularly, it is better than not having anyone you can rely on in these type of situations. When we had the pecking issue on the farm, our veterinary officer helped a lot in solving the problem. So as I mentioned earlier, it's always good to have someone like that around. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I have left the link in the description box and you can check out that video on how we solved our pecking problem on the farm. The fifth point is data keeping. Keeping data, especially on a new farm like ours, is very important. The truth is, with everything going on on the farm, you are not going to remember what happens every single day. And that is why you need to document whatever happens on the farm so you can refer to it in future when you have another set of beds. This will help you learn from your mistakes and also gain experience on the job. On our farm, we have two notebooks, one to record the mortalities and their corresponding reasons and another for all other things that happened on the farm, from the amount of feed they consumed in the first week to the vaccinations that they have received so far. So it has all the information that we need to cater for our new set of beds in future. So these are the five things or the five main points that you need to consider when taking care or catering for your day old chicks. Thank you so much for watching the video and see you soon in my next video. Bye.